Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 24 of Get Real with Rajiv. We're going to be answering four questions like we do in every single episode and today Pawan's going to be the voice of your questions. So Pawan, shoot the first question. The first question is from Rupa Hambaker on Facebook. She asks, is anxiety a common problem among entrepreneurs? If yes, can you share some tools to overcome this anxiety when dealing with business ups and downs? Okay, Rupa, let me deal with your anxiety about anxiety and tell you it's absolutely normal and natural for entrepreneurs to feel anxious. You know, we are paving the way towards our goals. We're going through journeys of uncertainty. So it's normal for our brain to feel worried, uh, to have doubt about things will work out or not work out. So it's pretty normal and natural. The mistake you could make is judge your anxiety. So don't sit there and judge your anxiety. The only tool I could give you to deal with anxiety is awareness. Make sure that you have that awareness that life is not in your control. Life will throw surprises at you even if you don't like them. And the journey is going to be filled with ups and downs. When you have that macro level of awareness and acceptance, you actually set yourself free. Because as human beings, the biggest mistake we make is we want to control every single thing in our life. Now we make those bold statements saying, I want to experience life to the fullest, but the reality is we don't want to experience life to the fullest. We want life to work the way we want it to work. So please understand that anxiety is, um, is a byproduct or a symptom of trying to have everything under control. And the reality, and this reality nobody can defy or change, is the reality is that life is not in your control. Which means it's normal for you to feel anxious about a few things. The only thing you should do is be aware when you're feeling anxious saying, hey, why am I trying to control everything? And you will see that awareness sets you free and that anxiety turns into gratitude saying, so what, life, bring it on, I'm willing to play the game. When you take that approach, then it's a more effortless journey towards big goals. Having said that, another thing you need to do uh, if you're having regular anxiety pangs is start understanding what makes you anxious. You know, sometimes it's a particular activity of our business when the moment we start thinking about it, it creates fear inside us. Sometimes it may be expansion of a business and what may be making you anxious is the fact that you feel you don't have the right support or the team or the second line leader or a partner who can support you with that scaling up of operations. That's what's making you anxious. So look at the root cause of the anxiety and turn the anxiety into action in the direction of solving that root cause. So these are two things, Rupa, that I would say awareness and then identify what is making you anxious and take corrective action. Having said all of this, Rupa, just be okay with the ups and downs and enjoy the journey, my friend. That's perfectly fine. So with that, let's jump to the second question, Pawan. The second question is from Francisco Souza on Facebook. I have a business idea and my relative also is looking out for the same product. But it seems like my relative wants that product as a goodwill to him. How do I get over this problem and tell my relative that this product is not free of cost and is chargeable and try to convince him to buy, buy it instead of expecting it for free of cost? Well, Francisco, you have shared a question which uh, it's not really your question, but I think it's a style of the question that that uh, intrigues me because I feel new entrepreneurs have these small little fears that actually take up their energy and drain their energy for days and months together. So Francisco, I'm not trying to disrespect or disregard your problem, but I just want you to trust me that your problem is the smallest problem you will ever face on planet Earth when you become an entrepreneur. Which means you got to prepare yourself for facing bigger and better problems than the small little trivial problem that is today capturing too much of your mind space. And the reason I wanted to answer this question in today's episode, Francisco, is as an example to a lot many entrepreneurs who make small little issues the biggest problem of their life and they lose days and weeks and drain their energy just behind that small little issue. So now coming to answering your real question, Francisco, the only thing I would say is just communicate clearly, openly with a clean intention. You know, there is nothing more powerful on this planet when you communicate your intention to people. You're not there to try to siphon money off your relative or cheat your relative or, or make uh, unethical profits out of it. But you got to also put the perspective to your relative saying, hey, if this is a product you're looking for, then I can offer this product to you and obviously it'll come at a price and we need to do business in fair exchange. 
Now, Francisco, if you cannot demand fair exchange in a relationship today, then you'll never be able to demand fair exchange for the rest of your life. And that will make you a very, very weak entrepreneur through the rest of your life. Because today it's about asking for what you are adding as a value to somebody. You're not willing to demand price for that. Tomorrow your team will take you for a ride. Your suppliers will take you for a ride. Your customers will take you for a ride. So please ground yourself in your own intention, Francisco. Look within and ask yourself, if I'm charging, am I wrong? No, I'm not. If I'm making some money by adding value to someone, am I wrong? No, I'm not. When you get that clarity with your own intentions and when you communicate through that intention, then life becomes a lot more simpler. And this is for a lot of us. When it comes to communicating things in relationships which are sensitive, be it in business or outside of business, some of us lose too much time, energy over trivial issues because we are not clear about our own intent and we are not grounding our communication based on our own intent. So the only thing I can say, Francisco, is communicate through your intent. If that other person is a fair thinking individual, they will understand the intent. If they're not a fair thinking individual and they are only one sided and looking at their greed, their personal gain and they want to make you feel guilty for charging for the value you add, then please let them go. OK, you don't you don't owe anything to anyone on this planet. So that's my take on it, Francisco. But very, very cute question you asked me. So I wanted to answer it. Let's go to the third question, Pawan. The third question is from Anish Tiwari on Facebook again. How to overcome stress and restart in life? As in, I'm in a big loss and debt. No sales are happening in my company. Even the two employees that I had have left their job and I'm losing my hope day by day. What are the some things, some of the things that I can do to decrease my debt, stress and restart again? Well, let me tell you first what not to do. That's Anish, right? Yeah. Okay. Anish, if you're in a debt, what not to do is become desperate. Now, I said that line like it's the easiest thing to do, but I know that is a difficult thing to do because when I went into debt, I became desperate. Having said that, my transformation and my change started when I stopped being desperate. So just trust me on my word and don't get desperate and look for quick fix solutions. If you've created a debt for yourself, first step, accept that you're in a loss, you're in a debt. Don't beat yourself up for it. A lot of entrepreneurs lose a lot of time and energy beating themselves up for creating that debt or blaming someone else because of whom they landed in the debt. No blame to others, no blame to self. That's the first rule. Acceptance. Acceptance that fine, I screwed up. Fine, someone else screwed me over. Fine, it happened. Now what? That's what you got to do. And that acceptance is a, again a conversation with yourself. That you need to stop fighting it. You need to stop fighting the world. You need to firstly accept it. Once you've accepted, fine, I'm in this debt. The second thing, whoever you owe this money to, Communicate to them clearly and promptly. Let them know that, hey, I intend to pay every penny back. I am not here to run away with your money. Please give me time. And trust me, in today's world, if you are able to do that and you are here to really pay people back, they will genuinely understand you. Okay? So tell them, look, your anger your yelling and screaming will not give you anything, will not give me anything. If there's anything that I need, it's time and space to rebuild and repay. And I will stay in communication with you. So stay in communication with the people that you owe money to. Third, okay, if people are leaving right now, which is pretty normal in a situation of debt for people to leave a sinking f uh, ship because they think the ship is sinking, let them go. Whoever stays are the ones you know you can rebuild it with genuinely. So give people a free option saying, hey, I know times are tough, but I'm giving you a free option. Either you leave or you stay. And if you're staying, we will rebuild it together. So stay strong and let people go whoever wants to leave. You can't blame them as well. Okay. Now the people you stay, who stay with them start rebuilding the business step by step. So go down to the most found, found, foundational question, the most fundamental question. What will make a sale happen? Only if you're providing a product or a service for which people are willing to pay money, that's when you will make a sale. If you're offering products and services for which people are not spending money, then you will not make a sale. Now remember one thing, you need to identify who is the right person. What do I mean by the right person? The right customer. Who is the right customer who has the money to pay you? 
who has the authority to make the decision to pay you and who has the need for your products and services. List out who has the money, authority and need for my products and services and target such people and put enough effort in making sales conversations and sales meetings happen. Which means you need to go out there and sell proactively instead of sitting on your chair and wasting time. This video should be the last thing you should do while you're sitting on your chair. After this, you got to make calls and reach out to customers, set up appointments, go out there and sell. But if you're not offering the right product or service, then you need to go back to the drawing board and figure out based on your strengths and skills, what can you create as a product or as a service which can add value to whom and at what price. So you got to build your business model, right product to the right customer. That's what you need to focus on and the right amount of effort. I'm telling you one big mistake a lot of people make in debt is that they sit and waste time and do nothing and they act like helpless victims saying now I'm in debt I don't know what to do accept you created it no problem even if someone screwed you over take responsibility communicate clearly and then get started with work rebuild it one step at a time there is no shortcut to this entire process just toughen yourself up make this a lesson and take action one step at a time Anish don't waste your life in guilt or in blame. That's all I would say for you. Let's go to the final question, Pawan. The final question is from Sebastian Verges on Facebook again. Salespeople bring, bring in three, four clients. After that, they don't go further even after giving all sorts of incentives. What is the best formula to make them grow? Sebastian, you're making the most classic example most business owners make. Most business owners think that money drives people and that's why they get it wrong. Money does not drive people for, to do more. What drives people to do more is culture. Okay, if you're, if this is a classic example, you're willing to give an incentive, but people are not driven by that incentive. So it means that money is not the driver. The driver is culture. Now this is where you got to go down to the basics of building a high performance culture in your team. Because what it clearly shows me based on your question is that you have people with a job mentality. Now, who are these people with a job mentality? These people just care about what is the amount that hits their bank account on a consistent basis on the 5th or the 10th of the month, whichever is the salary date in your business. These people are not here to build a career because they don't have any personal goals. They don't have any personal ambitions. They're just coming to work for the sake of survival. They're coming to work because at a certain age in society, you need to go earn money. Such people are not going anywhere and neither are they going to take your business anywhere. Now this is even for people who are in a job. If you work there for just the 5th or the 10th of the month, let me tell you something. You're going to form the lower middle class or the maximum the middle class of this society and the middle class and lower middle class have done nothing useful for this planet apart from playing the role of a victim. If you are even in a job, take ownership, take responsibility, seek growth. And if you are not in the right workplace, then look for a workplace that provides you growth. Being middle class and lower middle class is the worst thing anybody can do on this planet. Okay, now coming back to Sebastian's issue. Sebastian, here's what you need to do my friend. You need to have a conversation with your team and ask them what are their personal goals for their life. What do they want to do for themselves and for their families in the short term, medium term and in the long term. Make them answer this one question. What do they want to do for their families and for themselves in the short term, medium term and long term. Let them make a list. Okay, now when they make that list, they look, go inside and they go into reflection, into thinking, what is it that I really want for myself and my family? Now, they could write simple things like, hey, I want to buy a home, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a bullet, or I want to spend money on the education of my sibling, or I want to spend money on the education of the marriage of my sibling, whatever they may write. At the end of the day, that gives them clarity on what's important to them. Okay. Now, the moment you do this exercise, you will see a shift in energy of few people who are genuine and authentic about taking responsibility for their own life. And these are the people who now you align their personal goals with the organizational goals and you mentor them consistently. Once a month, you need to have at least a one to one meeting with every employee of yours. If you're a team which is less than 20 or 25 people. And you need to do consistent review meetings, team review meetings on their sales performance on a weekly or at least on a fortnightly basis. Now, when you constantly align their personal goals to the organization goals and map their effort towards achieving those goals for themselves and the organization, that's when you shift the culture from a mediocre, go with the flow, job mentality culture to a growth culture where people are looking at personal growth, career growth, organizational growth. 
if required show this video to your team members and if you're sebastian's team watching i want you to understand this don't just be just another job or salaried class person you'll end up being a victim take ownership why do you come to work okay ask yourself that question and let the organization's goals and your personal goals be aligned to each other and go after them in that way you win your team your your company wins and your customer gets more value look let me tell you something the reality i have seen ladies and gentlemen is everybody claims they want to be successful very few people are successful that's not because of luck or chance it's because very few people have it in them to do what it takes the rest of the them just yak 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 but they don't do anything with their life each one of us are completely responsible for the results of our lives and if we are where we are it is because of the decisions that we made the mindset that we have and if we don't shift it then only we are to look at ourselves and take responsibility not blame ourselves but take responsibility and make the change and even after knowing this if we don't take responsibility then we are unnecessarily occupying space on this planet we are just consuming ration for no reason and we're just going with the flow and nothing is going to change on this planet as a result of our presence or absence on this planet what a shameful life so ladies and gentlemen wake up shake up and do what it takes to achieve your goals because when you become successful you make people around you successful and that's how you contribute to your society and your nation and if you don't care to contribute to your society and your nation then nobody should care for you as well that's how the world works that was a passionate rant with that i come to the end of episode number 24 now we got to pick the question of the week so pawan indicate for me according to you okay pawan picked one and i think i like it so we're going to go with question number 4 which is the question by sebastian sebastian you brought the beast inside me out with your question my friend so you truly deserve the copy of my book lead or bleed my team is going to reach out to you and give you a, a copy of my book lead or bleed read the system called pay system in that book apply it with your team and if you love learning through conversations then come into my business space program that's the best way you can learn it sebastian but thank you so much for asking such a wonderful question and congratulations on winning that book and for the rest of you let's do this together share this so that more people can reach and get these solutions and make sure you put your questions in the comments below we have a pipeline of questions that we've already collected so every episode i answer four of them so if i'm not yet answered your question hold on it's coming okay but ask more questions i look forward to seeing you guys in my next episode